So, your mixed ratio is so important. So, I've got powder and left handed, my powder and my monomer. So, I, as I said, no, and I don't need to um, do my counting, but I'm going to count it just to show and demonstrate that. So, I'm going to do it with the cover pink so you can see it. People hate white. The reason people hate white is because the mix rate, they're working too soon. So it's not necessarily the bead that you pick up, it's the point that, that you then work with it on the nail that is so important to remember. Everyone works too soon. They work too wet. And what happens when you're working too wet and you literally pick the bead up and go straight on, you actually have less working time than you do by waiting. So the waiting scares you because you think, oh my God, it's gonna dry, I need to get it on. By waiting, you have longer. So you have liquid and your you have liquid and you have powder, and your you mix it together. And at first, it's a bit like, oh, what's, what's what's going on here? It's not too sure. It needs to just settle, and the chemistry it needs to then mix together. That takes time. It doesn't happen the second you pick it up. So you do not work until it's mixed together. Otherwise, you're working too wet. So too wet, what it does is it will run everywhere. You'll end up brushing it, you end up having to put far too much product on, you're chasing it round, you clog your brush. What you want is for, you need to control this, so you have to wait. So what we're going to work with is we're going to have winter bums and summer bums. The winter bum is when it's too soon. It's pitted, it looks like orange peel. So it looks like a winter bum. Okay. We do not pit it on the nail or work with it until it's a nice summer bum. It's, it's smooth because that has then absorbed, that monomer has absorbed all of the polymer powder. Then it's ready to work. So then you're just guiding it. Your product will not stick to your brush. Acrylic, wet sticks to wet. So if you're working with it too wet, it will just stick to your brush and yeah, that's how you get your brush stuck. So while you can probably you're all competent in how to pick up and what size to pick up. It's the waiting. Most people will rush or work too wet. So I go in. So I, I like a deep dappen dish because I can always fully put my, mon my brush in it. Okay. So first bead we pick up, you go as an L just to get rid of the air bubbles. That only needs to be the first bead on a full set. It doesn't need to be every one. If you do it for every single bead, it doesn't matter. You just don't need to. So L. Then the amount of monomer we wipe off and the amount of time it goes in there depends on the size of bead we want. So let's say I want a large bead. I'm going to go in and I'm only going to wipe from the tip once. Can you see the pressure? That's it. We don't bend this brush. That's too much coming out. We don't do it loads. It is literally just that. Your medium bead is middle to tip. Again, I'm not bending it. Your small bead is base to tip. Okay, so let's pick up a large bead. I am just removing from the tip. If you turn your brush that way when you pick up or keep it the same, it actually has no, it makes no difference. Okay. <coughs> Tip, hold it in the powder at a 45 degree angle and let it come to you. So you're going to, I'm going to do it again in a minute, but just dip at that angle and let it come to you. So. Tip, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Bring it out. It's powdery. So people think, too dry. Take it off, start again. We're going to turn that upside down and we're going to watch this now and see how it turns from its winter bum to its summer bum because this brush is fully loaded with monomer. So it's drip feeding it, but controlled. So if you think, you know those, um, you know if you go on holiday, you have those little plant feeders that drip feed the plants. So it's controlled feeding rather than overloading it with loads of water before you go, it will die it will be over a water and get, you have to constantly drip feed. 
So if we have a look, it's pearly and it's absorbed that powder. It would be ready to work. So it's the get, it's waiting, it's not getting it out and thinking too dry, too wet, it's waiting and seeing. Medium, middle to tip. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Take it out, turn it. It's warmer in here, so it happened quicker. The temperature affects this. The colder it is, the longer it takes, the warmer it is, the quicker it takes. So this is where you can use things to control and help you with the temperature. So if it's cold, you can have a heated blanket, a bit like a, a little blanket, but a tabletop one. Um, but it's for your back, so it's tabletop size. That, you can have that to warm up. You can have um, heated um, hand warmers, hot water bottles, things like that. So what matters temperature-wise is your client's hand and the monomer temperature. So if that's warm but that's freezing cold, it's going to make no difference. They've both got to be warm. So I would warm this like hot water, you know, get them to wash their hands under a warm tap before we start or anything like that. Hot water bottle, both. And the same if this is too hot and clammy, you need to cool it down with cold water. Small bead. Base to tip once. Or Mississippi. Then you've got all your bead size, like, sizes in between and this is where, you know, when you are more comfortable and you're more experienced with it, you'll know how much, how much. But that is, that's your guide, that's your general guide. It doesn't mean that that is all the exact ones that you'll pick up. So I am going to pick up a bead and place it. So this is what we do, we pick it up. It's, oops, sorry, winter bum. So I'm going to place that and I'm going to work with it. It's bouncing back at me, it's sticky. My brush has got product stuck to it. You can't, it's, it's flat because it's liquid still and it's just, it wants to automatically self level. Okay. And I've got product on my brush. So now that goes in there. It makes it soup. But it's in there, yeah, because you're contaminating. It's always in that brush even if you think it's not. Okay, so. Then pick up the bead and wait. Seems weird. You can place it on the nail and wait, but you're too tempted, yeah. and it will still go. Once it's on, you just kind of want to go. Right, yeah, well, and it will it. it will do that. Yeah. Okay, pearly summer bum. Place it. Clean. <laughs> yeah, you won't forget it. Clean your brush on the tissue in a clean place in a little roll. Go in the monomer, in a roll, clean it in another place, then go to your bead, and then you're going to mould it. Can you sit? It's not sticking to my brush. It's keeping its form. I am just moulding it then into shape. And it's then learning which part of your brush to use. If your brush is too flimsy, you can't control it but paint. Remember, we're sculpting, we're moulding. And then, look, I can use the different parts to really pull it to where I need it. Meaning I need to use less beads, less product, more cost effective. Okay, so that's, that's going to help your problem and that's your mixed ratio side.